Hi, right, this is Professor Cummings. I wanted to go through this problem from class. And, you know, it's a sim fairly simple problem, but, you know, I wanted to make sure everybody has a good understanding of it. All right, you got the wire AB is unstretched when theta is equal to 45 degrees. <clears throat> if a load is applied to the bar AC, which causes theta to become 47 degrees, determine the normal strain in the wire. <clears throat> so we can look at this picture, and a few things we can can get right off the bat. Here we have point A, let's just draw that one in, point C, which is the bar, and then the wire is A and B, they said, um, and you can look at the, basically the ground between C and B, or B and C, and you have L, and there's a distance of L, and a distance of L between A and C. So two are the same. You've got a 45 degree triangle here, or 45 degree angle here, at theta. Uh, so we can make some assumptions. We can assume this is a right triangle, and this is also, at least in the unloaded condition, that's 45 degrees. So with two with legs at the same length, we can say that this is a 45, 45 uh, right triangle. Now, when the bar is loaded, when the load is applied um, at, for AC onto the bar, and it causes theta to go to 47 degrees. So theta goes from 45 to 47 degrees. So this means this goes from 45 to 43. Right? But the legs are the same length. So we can go in and take that. So, so that's some of the basics we can look at. So let's go ahead and, and start setting this problem up. All right, so got all of our givens. We got the initial theta is 45 degrees. We have a secondary theta when it's loaded. Its second position is 47 degrees. And we have AC and BC are both the same length of L. We're just gonna leave those defined as L. What we're trying to find is the strain, normal strain, epsilon of AB. So how much this actually stretches when it's under load. So, you know, got a loaded condition and an unloaded condition. A few things change between them. So when we look at this, this setup. We can think of this as just a, a isosceles right triangle, right? So here we have two legs of the same size, both of length L. You got two 45 degree angles, and you have your 90 degree angle here. And the length of this hypotenuse, we just call it AB. The length is AB. So we got this is the unloaded condition. So this this condition, we'll just say this is no load. So this is an unloaded condition. We also have a, a loaded condition. Right, so again, the legs don't change. However, with this bar loaded, you know, with the bar loaded, we do get a change in the two angles. So what we end up with is a 43 degree angle. Again, it's still an isosceles triangle, so these are gonna be the same. And we have a new length, I'm just calling it AB prime. So AB prime, so, so First thing we do is we can look at both of those two triangles and recognize there are certain things that are going to stay the same. The, the legs are going to stay the same. And there's a couple of things that are going to change. The angles go from 45 to 43, and the length is going to change. So AB is going to be stretched to AB prime. So again, the legs are constant. The, lo the loaded to unload conditions reflects the difference between AB and AB prime, as well as theta. But mostly we're concerned with AB to AB prime. So the stretch, the difference between the stretch and unstretched guy wire. Now this is an unusual problem because we don't have a whole lot of knowns, but we also really, we have just two unknowns. We've got the legs and we've got the lengths. Well, three if you count the, you know, the secondary position. But I think we can can handle this. So, but if we think of this as just two triangles and we're trying to compare with nothing but the hypotenuse being stretched, we can start to see how to, to set this problem up. So let's go back and, and, and set this up a little bit. You know, we've got our original image. So you got the unloaded condition. Again, 
So 45, 45, 90 isosceles triangle and the legs of a length L. We also got the loaded condition, which is a 45, 43, 43, 94 isosceles triangle. You know, with the legs again at length L. So there's two things that you know about this. Since this is an isosceles triangle, we can use Pythagorean theorem. You know, these get, you know set these things up in terms of a Pythagorean theorem and, and, and establish AB in terms of L. The common. So L is common between both conditions. So length L is common between both conditions. And we can establish AB in terms of the length. That way, using Pythagorean theorem. But we got to do something a little different here, because it is not a right triangle. So in order to try and understand this one, we're going to have to use something a little bit different. We're going to do the law of cosine. That way, we can avoid dealing with a right triangle. Or if we don't have, or if it's not a right triangle, we can, we can use this. So we will need to use Pythagorean theorem and the law of cosines. And if you don't remember what those are, uh, Pythagorean theorem again is c squared. So c is the hypotenuse is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. So this would be the two legs. Law of cosines is a little bit more complicated. Here you've got the longer leg, which would be the extended a b c squared is equal to the square root of this entire quantity of a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine gamma. Right, so remember this is the law of cosines and that's where we're going to find the ab prime. And we look at both those, put them in terms of L. And go from there. So let's go back to our problem. Again, so we've got our two triangles, and you know, one's it, both of those same legs of L. Uh, one has 45 degree angles, and the other one has 43 degree angles. So we have the unloaded condition. So this is the right triangle, and this is what we're going to deal with with the Pythagorean theorem. Unloaded. You've got the hypotenuse of AB is equal to the square root of L squared plus L squared, or equal to the square root of 2L squared. I can simplify that to AB equals the square root of 2L. All right, so we know we have AB in terms of L. Now we got to look at this one and apply, you know, AB prime and apply, uh, Law of cosines to it. So again, we got a few things we know, and we can look at it. We have these 43 degree angles. We don't have L, but we can put everything in terms of AB again. So we got the loaded condition. Again, just making our substitution. L is equal to the square root of this quantity, L squared plus AB prime squared minus 2L AB prime times the cosine of 43. All right, so we're starting off looking like we're just looking at one of these legs. So wait, we're going to simplify this a little bit more. First, we're just going to square both sides of the, the equation. So now we have L squared times L squared plus AB squared, AB prime squared minus 2L times AB prime times cosine of 43. So we can go ahead and simplify this a little bit. Put up L squared from both sides or subtract L squared from both sides. All right, so now you've got this little simplified problem is equal to zero. AB prime squared minus 2L AB prime minus cosine of 43. So what we're going to do is add this to both sides. So now we got a problem. We can start to do a little more cancellation. So we've got AB prime. AB prime square, those cancel out. So you now we only have AB prime on one side of the equation. 
So here we have 2 times the length of one leg L times the cosine of 43 is equal to AB prime. So this is also in terms of L. So we get the wire is in terms of L and from an unloaded and loaded condition. Now let's go back and re strategize a, a little bit more. So here we're back to our wire, our initial drawing. So we got a function that describes the original length, the unloaded condition. And that was the first function from the you know, unloaded condition AB is equal to two, the square root of 2 times L. We've also got another function that describes the changed length. You know, AB prime is equal to 2L times a cosine of 43 degrees. So what can we do with this? Well, if we know that this is the unloaded condition, this is the loaded or the stretched wire, now we can go back to our equation for strain. Because we've got the original length, and we got the new length. And we can go ahead and write this definition. So the change in length over its original length. Or the difference between AB prime and AB over AB will get us the strain in AB. Knowing that that change in length is the difference between these two, AB prime minus AB. Or making that substitution in terms of L, the leg of the of the triangle, you've got 2 times the length cosine of 43 minus the square root of 2 times the length or the leg of L. So let's go back and finish things up. So now we've got our regular strain equation, normal strain. We have the change length or AB prime minus the original length, so this is the change in length, divided by the original length. And if you look at this, you've got, you can start canceling the length. So we've gotten rid of the last unknown. So we've got 2 times the cosine of 43 minus the square root of 2, divided by the square root of 2. All right. So from there, we actually come up with a value that the strain of AB is equal to 0 0.0344. That is how we can look at the strain. So basically just looked at a way to find the unloaded condition versus the loaded condition. And from there put it in terms of L using some basic trigonometry knowledge that we have and we're able to find the strain. Okay, this is Professor Cummings. Uh, go ahead and, you know, if you like this video, if it was helpful, go ahead and, and like it. Uh, if you think somebody else might need it, go ahead and share it with them. If you didn't like it, go ahead and unlike it. <laughs> and, you know, leave a comment for, you know, future videos that, that might be helpful to you. All right, I'll talk to you later.